Hello, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst for CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the U US markets for Monday's trading on the 10th July 2016. Hello and uh, good weekend. I hope, hope everybody had a good weekend. Uh, looking forward to today's trading session now with uh, with this news of uh, potential Japanese QE, which I'll certainly start to discuss shortly. Please do visit tradesignal.com. Signals and market updates from leading providers. www.tradesignal.com. You can download the uh, latest uh, app from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so in terms of Asian markets overnight, folks, uh, certainly a stellar session overnight, especially with the Shang uh, Nikkei up uh, stellar four percent, uh, Hang Seng up one point five, Shanghai flat. Okay, Shanghai certainly a cause for concern. Okay, in terms of um, the uh, the actual continuation in European markets this morning, certainly a failure for continuation. European markets certainly not uh, impressed by the euphoria in Asia with regards to potential QE. It looks more like a short covering rally, given the fact that copper and oil certainly are languishing at the lows. Okay, uh, and again, that is a cause for concern. In terms of the uh, markets themselves uh, at present, uh, the markets and the movements at present, the uh, FTSE certainly, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the movement, FTSE up 0.5, although it did give back the gains, a large amount of gains. Uh, German DAX up 1.2 and the French CAC up by 1%. Same with the Euro stocks. Okay, so the question really now is why did the markets rally post NFP? I think we've all got the answer, folks. Okay, Mr. Arby wins a uh, overwhelming majority to secure a potential uh, another round of uh, QE. And really, it's um, it's the concept or definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Uh, and uh, really, that is... Um, that is the case at present, okay? So they're doing the same thing over again, expecting a different result, and that isn't obviously the case. It's the same result, and it's going to lead to failure, okay? There has to be some sort of fiscal side reforms rather than just monetary. So again, it certainly is failing. It certainly seems like, okay, my gun is bigger than yours, okay? My QE book gun is bigger than your QE gun, and they just basically want to fire it, and that, that's literally, they're putting all their eggs into one basket, and it really isn't. Uh, are going to have much of an effect okay the 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 usd jpy correlation with the s p 500 broke down a long time ago with usd jpy languishing and the s p 500 testing at 2135 zone so in terms of the s p really it's all about the s p uh more s p 500 if i bring up the weekly chart all eyes on the weekly chart that resistance at 2130 uh 30 and then 2134 currently trading around the 2133 level and therefore looking for a potential reversal okay that's basically what i'm anticipating and what i am expecting okay so that certainly is uh, is the case in terms of market reaction okay right okay folks in terms of the uh, technical picture uh, i think we all know why the market's rally now it wasn't it had nothing to do with the nfb give, given the fact that average hourly earnings are weak and in, in, in an unemployment rate uh, certainly increased as well regardless of more jobs being created it was a distorted picture so again it didn't justify the s p 500 testing at 2130 uh, zone at all other than the fact that we had qe via japan okay right in terms of the markets let's just bring them up obviously we know the s p has a uh, resistance at 2135 certainly expecting that to hold given the fact that we've had a lack of follow through in china and lack of follow through in europe as well let's just break down the russell because the russell is really the key in terms of the next potential move so let's bring up the daily chart russell Currently, you have Russell of resistance at 116.9. Russell currently trading around the 1180 level. 1180 is basically the uh, uh, 1180 really is the correspondence of the gap fill resistance. Okay, so from my perspective, you're certainly going to see resistance on the S&P 500. If Russell does move high up to 18870, it's currently 18810. Okay, that again will be resistance. So with Russell being into resistance, you are going to see a cap on the uh, US markets from my perspective, especially given the fact that oil is languishing at the lows, okay? Oil currently is trading around the $44 level. So again, if the economic report was that bullish, if global growth was that strong, then why is oil still languishing? If markets were embracing risk and uh, markets were bullish, then why is oil still languishing back at 44? And why are we continuing to plunge lower, okay? Again, we made an intraday low today, a new low. So again, these are all things that you need to take into consideration in terms of when assessing whether the market is bullish or bearish, okay? That certainly is one of the reasons. Okay, so certainly looking for weakness there, okay? Now, in terms of the NASDAQ daily chart, if I bring the daily chart, the NASDAQ certainly looking for weakness based on the fact that we are into gap fill resistance now at 45.40. Uh, if you do push higher, then you have resistance at 45.70. And then you do have gap fill support or gap fill resistance at 4,600. 
Now, 4,600 certainly looking very unlikely from my perspective. My analysis certainly indicates 4,600 4, certainly out of the equation altogether. That's my understanding, my interpretation. The reason why I say that is because you have uh, biotechs coming into gap fill resistance, so therefore looking for weakness there. You have um, semiconductors as well coming into a pot potential resistance as well, so certainly looking for risk off there as well. Okay. Uh, in terms of the VIX, the VIX certainly plunged on Friday, late Friday, uh, certainly uh, an impressive plunge at that. Okay, uh, Russell 3000, again, you're into gap for resistance, double top, therefore looking for weakness on US markets. Okay, let's just bring up the US dollar as well. US dollar still remains bullish. Again, uh, the jobs report, certainly, even though we had average hourly earnings weak, it certainly created more jobs, and that obviously brings into the question uh, of potential rate hike concerns. And again, it's dollar positive to a large extent although that certainly has been factored into the equation, okay? Uh, and uh, again, it certainly has uh, raised more concerns. I mean, not to mention Brexit as well, folks. I mean, even with Brexit concerns, a VIX certainly still breaks down. So whether I, my personal opinion is, is this is definitely a false breakout on the expectation of obviously additional QE via Japan, which really hasn't, but isn't going to materialize, okay? It has failed to uh, push the markets higher till, till, till now and will continue to fail as well, okay? Right, in terms of the Dow Transports, let's just bring up the Dow Transports for you. Let's have a look at the uh, position that that's in. Into 200 MA on the Dow Transports, again, looking for potential resistance. You do have uh, previous uh, support equals resistance here as well, so it's a key zone, okay? It's a very important zone here. So again, watch out for this potential zone and observe it, okay? You do have a diagonal trend line coming from here to here. So again, if we do push higher, then you certainly have resistance uh, in this zone here, okay? But certainly into resistance on the Dow Transportation Index for now. Bringing up the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones, okay, going back to the weekly chart, we're backing, slamming back into that resistance. Currently Dow Jones trading at 18,200, okay? 18,200 is obviously resistance here, okay? And then obviously you have resistance up there as well. So they are the zones that you're going to be watching out for, 18,200. If you push higher, then you're looking at 18,290, okay? So very, very important in terms of the next move there. So biotechs, NASDAQ, S&P, all coming into resistance for me, looking for a potential uh, reversal and a move lower. In terms of commodities, commodities still remain weak. You have unfilled gaps below. This is the commodity index and looking for further weakness. Dollar index certainly remains set to move higher. So again, looking for weakness. Okay, so US, uh, UK, European markets, basically from my perspective, all remain bearish and looking for a move lower. Okay. Emerging markets as well coming into resistance now on the weekly chart, daily chart at the moment. You certainly are coming into resistance on the emerging market front as well. Okay, so again, that's another factor. Okay, so certainly take that factor into account. Okay, so uh, again, looking at uh, resistance here, you're into gap fill. So certainly with the pop overnight as well. So just certainly into gap fill resistance. So emerging markets into resistance as well. Shanghai still fails to rally. Okay, so again, certainly weak. Let's look at the financial sector. The financials of the US certainly into resistance there, you're into 200 MA. You do have an unfilled gap above, but with Italian bank concerns ongoing, it's going to be very hard for a real concerted effort on the financial sector. Looking at the energy sector, given the weakness in oil, okay, again, is going to be under pressure today, hence the reason why it supports the, uh, and you can see diagonal trend line resistance here as well, and gap fills just above. You can certainly see why we're weak, okay, and why I'm expecting weakness on the US markets, which should eventually feed through onto uh, the European and Asian markets eventually as well. So again, looking for weakness. Okay, folks, that really remains the theme. Retail sector as well had a push higher on Friday into gap fill into 200 MA. So certainly looking weak retail sector, certainly indicating a potential move lower as well. Okay, so again, turn that, take that into consideration. Now the US 10 year, let's just bring up the 10 year note. This is something that I did explain to you on and then. On the day, your daily chart at the moment is indicating that you are looking at a potential dollar rally, okay? You can certainly see how you're holding resistance up here. The bond market certainly hasn't pushed higher. Bond market is now going to reverse and move lower. If that moves lower, then the yield will start to rise and the dollar will start to rise as well, okay? So watch out for potential dollar weakness as well. That certainly is going to be key, okay? All right, folks, I think that certainly is a, a good insight there. Okay, Any? Uh, uh, I think that's it really for, for now. Uh, just... Uh, Keep an eye on the weakness on the S&P 500, looking for that resistance to hold at 2135. No real catalyst other than potential Japanese QE. If Japanese QE is interpreted as being super bullish, uh, it's very hard to envisage that given the fact that the USDJPY is still at 102. 
Okay, if the USD JPY starts to break 103, 104, 105, then maybe it supports the potential rally based on a weaker yen. Okay, so again, I'm going to remain cautious for now and look for uh, a further weakness. Okay, I think that's a summation of US markets. Again, 2135, 2140 is a key line. If you break that with yen crashing as well, then you can certainly attribute it to the uh, additional QE via J Japanese Mr. Arby. Okay, I think that's a summation. Please do visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of that 25% bonus. Cool.